Welcome everybody. This is a quick video to take you through the significant ideas of the International Baccalaureate Environmental Systems and Societies Topic 1, Foundations of ESS. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about each of the different subtopics because I have separate videos for each of those, but this is really designed to encapsulate what Topic 1 is all about. So first is that there are historical events and other influences that shape environmental value systems. Those environmental value systems, of course, are the way that people perceive and respond to environmental issues wherever they may be in the world. Those environmental value systems fall along a spectrum, just like a political spectrum. You may have people on the left, you may have people on the right. So on environmental value systems, you may have ecocentrics or people who follow an ecocentric environmental value system. That's an earth centered environmental value system. People who follow an anthropocentric or people centered environmental value system. And here behind my picture is the technocentric environmental value system in which people perceive that humanity's ability to create and invent new technologies and new solutions is our path to solving Earth's environmental problems. Systems thinking is essential for mastering the content in the Environmental Systems and Societies course. And I really like Barry Commoner's quote from the early 1970s about the first rule of ecology because I think it embodies systems thinking. That rule, of course, is that everything is linked to everything else. An output of one part of the system as an input to another part of the system. Transfers and transformations in one part affect transfers and transformations in another part. A systems approach to understanding how our world works helps us study very complex environmental issues. Right? This is where instead of looking at the individual parts of an ecosystem or the individual parts of an environmental issue, what we're really emphasizing here are the way that those parts are connected. Right? The systems view helps us build a holistic understanding of a broader global system. And we do that by producing models, which may actually simplify some of those interactions, but overall the models will help us see the bigger picture in a way that is more understandable and is more easily grasped by a wider range of people within humanity. Right? Thermodynamics is probably one of the few areas in which the field of physics is evident in the ESS course, and that, that is that thermodynamics dictates the flow of energy in a system and how that system can do work, how productive that system is. Stable states or equilibria are an essential component of ecosystems. Um, and because ecosystems are living breathing, constantly changing systems. We call those dynamic equilibria or stable state equilibria. But because they involve living organisms, changing some of the non-living aspects of those systems can drive those systems towards what's called a tipping point where the equi equilibrium shifts from one level to a whole new level. One part of that, one type of feedback may be positive feedback in which one change creates a greater change, which creates additional change, which creates additional change and moving the entire system away from an original equilibrium to a new equilibrium. And other types of feedback are called negative feedback. 
which is a type of feedback in which one change causes a second change and the second change offsets the first one and dampens it a bit. The negative feedback we generally prefer in ecosystems because it tends to be stabilizing, whereas positive feedback tends to be destabilizing. Sustainability, of course, is a major concept in the Environmental Systems and Societies course. Um, and that is this premise that everything that people do, everything that we use can be measured or assessed in terms of how it preserves our ability to provide for future generations at the same degree at which we have access to those resources, whether they're ecological goods or ecological services. Sustainable development is this socio-economic political idea that we can meet needs of our current generation without impacting or negatively impacting the ability of future generations to also meet their needs. It deals with natural capital, natural income, which we cover in significant depth in topic 1.4. One of the major models that we'll come back to several different times in the ESS course is this idea of an ecological footprint, which is a simplified idea of the, the amount of land and water that is needed to supply every single thing needed to keep a person or a population alive for a year. That's one way to assess or measure the sustainability of our actions. Another is by using environmental indicators, and those are things such as biodiversity levels, soil quality indicators, um, measurements of pollution levels, and we're gonna get into those in significantly more detail when we start topic two and we start looking at ways to measure and assess changes in ecosystems. Finally, in topic one, we take a look at pollution. And this subtopic in particular is very important because the three-tiered approach to pollution management is something that you'll encounter over and over again in every single topic in the ESS syllabus. Pollution at its simplest form is something that people do or create and release into the environment that has a significant impact on the life that lives there. That's it for my quick topic one overview. Those are the essential understandings or big ideas about ESS topic one foundations. You can check out some of my other videos for more detailed specifics and terminology around topics 1.1 through 1.5. Also, be sure to visit my website and look for resources that are available there. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot.